what's up guys welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be turning normal fedora 39 into more of something gaming oriented for beginners or beginners or beginners i have to stress that multiple times because the last video i did about arch linux you have the arch latest coming in and basically saying everything i did that worked didn't work even though it worked that video was very successful and I'm very, very thankful to the Linux community for that. So I'd figure let's do this again with Fedora Workstation and then maybe Ubuntu, but I don't know about that. I'm still not a fan of Ubuntu. So we're going to be grabbing the Workstation version, of course, and the Intel x86 64 bit right there. So, uh, if it's one of the slow days, it's going to download slow. If it's one of the fast days, it's going to download fast. Right now it's at two minutes, so I'll be back when it's finished. Now that the ISO is done downloading, we're going to hop into VMware. We're going to hit new. We're going to do custom because I figure it's a lot better for you guys to get to know this a little easier. We're going to select that ISO right there. Okay. Now, just going to keep the machine name just what it is. I'm going to set this to number of cores, 6, because I can do that. And I'm going to set my RAM to 16 gigs, because I can do that as well. We're going to keep the NAT. And we're going to keep the LSI logic. We're going to go with NVMe. And we're going to create a new disk. We're going to make it about 64 gigs. And store as a single file. And afterwards, we want to customize the hardware. So now that we're done that part, we need to customize by going to options, UEFI. I have to disable side channel mitigation. And before we even boot up, because I know there's going to be a problem if we boot up, I need to go into documents, virtual machines, Osmic, and we need to open this up and we need to flashbang turn this to false and hit save now the reason i'm doing this is in a virtual machine is so that you guys can know you can practice at a virtual machine and if you don't want to do this at all you can just go grab nabora os which is fedora but made for content creators and gamers i have a video about that on my channel if you want to check it out and this is the perfect time for you guys to maybe subscribe and like the video. Now this video is going to be long-ish, but I've written down the steps that I have to do for myself on the side over here to make things easier for you and me to save time. Be fun. So first we're just going to install the OS and it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to boot up and install Fedora. To take no time at all, hopefully, to start the installer. There we go, hit continue. So this is our disk. I'm gonna just, for now, select automatic and hit done. But I also wanna show you that you could totally hit custom and have it create them automatically here. this we're gonna hit done there and accept changes all right so next we're gonna hit begin installation gotta do its normal thing it's just gonna install configure the disks and we'll be back after we're on the desktop so the installation has finished let's reboot and enjoy our brand new install Whoa. All right, your boot time should be pretty quick if you're on an NVMe. If you're on an SSD, it will also be quick. If you're on an HDD, why do you like pain? Stop that. Stop that. It's not okay. So we're in. First time setup, start setup. We will be enabling third-party repositories. It's very, very important. We will be skipping. Add your name. Add your password and start using Fedora. 
can log you out and log you in. And there's a tour now. Oh, look at that. Type search, workspaces. Oh, kind of cool. So we're going to start with the kernel. That's probably the most important part. And to do that, I have to grab a link here real quick. Copy that. We're going to open this link up here inside of Mozilla. There we go. So this is the Cache OS kernel. Okay. And there will be a link to everything, of course. Um, yeah. Which is annoying. Where is this? Where's the actual core at? I want it. So there's your instructions. And I know this might be a bit weird, but we're going to do it anyway this way because this way you know that it can be done, okay? So first things first, we're going to just do that and we're going to pump this up super big. We're going to go into Sue. As you notice, it's going to say wrong password. So you're going to do sudo password. And it will ask you for your new password for root. Then you're going to type sue again, enter that password, and you're in. And we're going to hit paste. We're going to agree. And then we're going to install the bore EVDF kernel. Paste that in. And we're also going to install, I believe the headers, is that what they're called? Yeah, it's the devil, I believe, the devil, or this should hopefully bring up results. Now, as you notice, right off the bat, it's pretty slow to be able to do this. We're going to have to optimize the hell out of... Uh, DNF. So let's begin by optimizing DNF. We're going to use Nano. Nano is a very easy to use program. I would never touch Vim in my entire life. I'm sorry, it's just overly complicated and annoying. So we're going to do, let's see, DNF, DNF.com. We're going to go down here and we're going to add well, actually is max parallels in here it's not so max underscore error underscore downloads equals 10 default is 10 for me i'm going to do 20 because i have a better download speed than most and the next thing we're going to add is fastest mirror equals true Okay, hit control S, it wrote the 10 lines, and then hit control X. Next, we're gonna once again run this, and give me a second. As you see, it's determining the fastest mirror possible, 138 hosts. Then it's gonna go a little bit quicker now, and it's gonna find everything that we need. And we're going to hit yes. But once again, determining the fastest mirrors. As you can see, it's working. And it's running really well, which is really good. This is what you want. So it seems to have gone and stuck itself. There we go. We're going to yes. Yes again. And after that. It's going to install everything that you need. So kernel modules, kernel core, and it's 66.7cb1. And this is the one that we want because this is the one that's best for gaming performance and has the lowest latency. It brings us the closest possible to Windows performance. Now next, we're going to want to install another line of stuff. It's important for the NVIDIA drivers. We're going to just maximize this window. 
and I'll see you when this is finished. Okay, so it's done. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste this. So let's go over this line. We need pkgconfig libglvnd devil libglvnd whatever it's called opengl glx acpid dkms make gcc kernel headers kernel devil all of this will ensure that you're going to be able to build your drivers because the next one is pretty simple and uh, by simple I mean you're going to download the current NVIDIA drivers from the website and I'll show you how to make sure they're executable and then how to install them. So basically it's as simple as easy as using Windows. Which is weird to say, isn't it? This is a beginner's guide to how to turn Fedora 39 into sort of a gaming distro with little to no effort and so far Little to no effort has been done. Next thing we need to do is rebuild the grub. As you can see, it copied extra lines. It's not something I usually like. Once the scrub config is rebuilt, all you have to do is reboot. And the new kernel is going to show up in the bootloader. So we do one. And let's check it out. It's just going to boot, is it? It's not even going to show us anything. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go fix that. Let's see if it selected the new kernel. Oh, no, it's doing that Wayland thing. Opening up a window should solve it. So new name dash R. We're on the proper kernel. So it selected the right one after rebooting, which is what we wanted in the first place. So let's deal. I did I'm so sorry. Let's deal with um let's deal with grub. Okay. Go back into Sue. We're gonna do nano slash etsy slash default grub and as you can see we're going to be working with this line right here we're going to be adding some things to it depending on if you use nvidia or amd okay amd cpu the first line is for enabling wayland use you're going to go down to the line at the very end and you're going to just paste in, or you're going to type in this. This allows you to use Wayland. All right. You have an AMD CPU. You're going to want to have AMD P-State active. This allows your CPU to be at its best. And this is the command that you type in to get that to work. Well, more, less of a command and more of just line. Afterwards, you hit Control S. And that's it. Grub has been modified to allow the NVIDIA drivers to use Wayland. Okay. Yay. Also after control S, hit control X. The next thing we need to do is to go grab the NVIDIA drivers because I have to show you how to use them too. NVIDIA Unix. Now for current purposes, because the Wayland patches are not something I currently can compile, on Fedora 39, I don't know why I've tried, it doesn't work. Uh, use these drivers right here, the production branch. Which actually means we can't just install them from here and have it work. It require a lot more work. The newest drivers have an issue with Wayland. It's annoying. It is what it is. And it's hard to get around it, so... For these, we're going to do DNF install Pacmon. Oh, it doesn't show. Okay. So this is where this comes in handy. This allows us to enable repos and stuff. And we want to go down and enable the NVIDIA repo. Already enabled. 
I think it's NVIDIA then? Yes, it is. So it's ACMOD NVIDIA. This will install the latest drivers that you need. Does it edit anything? Excellent work. That's your power. Wow. It uses the newest drivers. I'm very surprised. I wonder if it uses the modification to Wayland to do it. If it does, that would solve a lot of problems. But I'm not seeing it anywhere. I don't know. Anyway, for this, you just hit yes. And once that's finished, we can deal with getting BRR working. So that's variable refresh rate. And there we go. We are done. Great. Don't instantly reboot. You're going to want to wait a couple of seconds or a two to three minutes before rebooting. So Akbot can build its kernel modules in the background. So the next thing we're going to want to do is enable VRR or variable refresh rate in Fedora so you can have the best time possible. And has she updated her newest package yet? Yes, she has. Thank the gods. So doing this is pretty simple. This is the line. So DNF or bar enabled. I don't know how to say that word, okay? And you just enable this. You hit yes. Sudo DNF update. Just hit yes. And if we did, if you did the following steps with the DNF, this should be lightning fast. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Now we did touch grub. And that's a problem because our changes will not be applied if we do not rebuild grub like we did last time. So after this is finished, we're gonna update grub. So that when we reboot our changes will take effect okay these are imported correctly and it's about to go and install everything i believe Yep, there we go. Okay, so as I said, we now need to rebuild Grub. And that's it, it's done. There we go, Grub is rebuilt. So the next step for the VRR thing is to make it so it's a priority. That way it won't get removed during an update. This is the command to set it as a priority. I'm going to leave this here for a second. Well, you can pause the video. I'm going to hit enter. And that's it. Everything is done. So, what's left to do? Well, we installed the NVIDIA drivers. We installed the Cache OS kernel. If you have an Xbox controller, there is something you can enable to get better Xbox support. Honestly, I'd recommend using a PS5 controller over an Xbox controller any day, but that's just me. So here's how this works. The first one enables the repo. The second one installs the firmware. The third one approves the firmware. Uh, the fourth one builds the firmware and the last one installs the firmware. See if it works without a problem. Yes. Yes, we're going to agree to that. And we're going to accept the terms. And once this is finished, 
we should be good to go. It's installing the thing that we built and we're done. So that's another thing down. And the last thing is Mesa Git. So why Mesa Git? Well, sometimes Mesa has branches for newer features and Mesa Git always gets those newer features. You can do this if you want to. I don't really recommend it. I recommend just sticking with whatever Mesa comes with, um, you know, Fedora 39. But if you want newer features, if you saw something that's newer, I will link in the description below a repo or Mesa Git. And all you got to do is follow the instructions, okay? Now, we're going to reboot because we're finished. That's it. Drivers are installed for NVIDIA. Scrub is set up for best AMD CPU performance and best uh, for Wayland for NVIDIA. Uh, we have Mutter VRR. You have KDE. You don't need it. Now that we've finished installing everything we needed for a gaming oriented distro, we need to now install what we need for gaming itself, which is, of course, Steam, Mangohut, Gold Relay, Lutris, Wine, and Wine Tricks. These combined together end up getting you everything you need. Now, since I ended up installing the NVIDIA drivers in a VM, it of course broke the VM, and that's unfortunate, so I had to do a reinstallation and just to get this last part of the video done for you guys. So as you can see, everything there that we need, and it's also updating all of the packages. Just hit yes to install. And again, DNF is optimized, so it's gonna grab everything super quick. And then it's gonna install everything super quick. Well, okay, installation's not gonna be super quick, but you know what I mean, right? And after this, it should take no time at all. So there's the wine file system. There's glibc, which we need. I'm gonna grab everything required for Steam, everything required for Lutris. And yeah, honestly, it'd be good to go after this. So now that that's installed and done, close out that app. Uh, you should be able to just do wine config. And the wine version should be eight something. I think we're going to have to install a whole bunch of stuff like mono and whatever else it asks us to install. Whoever invented the force quit and wait, I had no patience, clearly. Ah, there we go. Set that to point 11, set that to Windows 11, and that's done. So next we're going to open up Steam because Oh, well, it's a beginner's guide. I got to show you how to enable Steam compatibility system-wide so you guys can just have everything you need. While that's doing that, we need to go grab another program called Proton up QT. We're going to install this. This is going to allow us to grab our custom wine versions or Proton versions. And custom wine versions too. Okay, so I was right. This is a very, very important program. All right, Steam should have a pop-up window here real soon. And then I'll log in. This is gonna take a minute or two to install. You gotta grab libraries and things like that, okay? All right, while well, Steam's doing its thing, we're also gonna open up this. And we're going to add version 25 GE's Proton. Okay. We're going to go to Steam, Settings, Compatibility, and enable that. Okay. Next, we're going to go to, I believe it's Downloads. And you're going to disable this. It's no longer needed. Also, I suggest you unclick this. And we're going to need to fix 
the slow download speeds on Steam because you're going to get them. It's just a thing that Steam screwed up and that unfortunately users need to fix. So to fix the Steam slow download speed bug, we're going to do sudo. Actually, let me do it this way. This way you guys can see. We're going to do nano. And where it says user, you're going to type your name and hit enter. And then we're going to drop in two lines just like that. Both of those will end up fixing the problem. Control S to save, Control X to exit. And once that done, you can end up restarting this by hitting exit. And then when you go to download something, you should be ultimately fine and it should work. Now, Steam's going to take ages to boot up because we're in a VM, of course. Go figure. Anyway, um, there you go. Steam is installed, and Steam will download games quickly. So, uh, what is a very small game that I have that I can download quickly? Let's use, uh, use Half-Life as an example. So, this is going to lock the space, and then it's going to download... Pretty damn quick. And that's it. We're done. Not going to get any faster than that because it's a small game. Plus the read and write speeds of an NVMe inside of a VM is crippled. If you don't use a proper VM software like OnRaid and other type of stuff. So yeah. There's Half-Life. Finished and done. I'm going to try to play it. See what happens. <laughs> There's no way this friggin' works. Play. It'd be weird if this worked. Oh, it works. Uh, if you ever want a game in a VM, please remember to enable exclusive mode. It's not going to work because it's not registering my mouse. That's another driver that you have to install. So it is what it is. Now, let's talk Go Overly. I don't know if it's going to work or function at all in a VM, but we're going to try. It does. Good. So this is a cool little program. It allows you to monitor your performance and stuff. And there's lots of options you can enable. Um, using it's pretty simple. We hit save. We exit out. And if we go back in, you're going to notice that we have all of our information up on the screen. Pretty cool, huh? So setting this globally will enable it in every game. And uh, you'll need to restart your OS, of course. It, it's a part of the thing. Mango HUD's very useful to determining if you have a performance problem. What else to talk about here? Right. Start up Bluetrust for the first time. And it's going to basically tell me I don't have Vulcan installed, which I don't. And... There it is, good. And now we can go open up Proton once more. And you'll notice that we can now add a custom version of wine in there. You do not want this one. That's for League of Legends only. And once that's finished, a version of wine will be available in here to be able to use for any game. Another cool thing is you can ins you can sign in to specific app stores using Lutris, which is nice. But the last thing that we need to go grab is the Heroic Game Launcher. 
that's not a thing. Okay, so. Relic game launcher. We're going to click this one. And over on the side, it's right there with a funny ass name. Because I don't know why people do that, but they add really stupid names to things. It's going to open up here. We're going to hit install. And once this is done, we open it for the first time. We can use both WineGE and ProtonGE in the Heroic Game Launcher. This has been for Epic Games and GOG Games as well, and Amazon. So, um, how do I show you this? So as you can see, Epic, GOG, and Amazon logins. Now, your library, you'll be able to select on GE, Wine GE, and default, whatever's built into your system. Hope this helps. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 18 minutes, 17 minutes, wasn't that long. And I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, do all that cool stuff. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.